On this channel, I've made quite a few videos on the Micro Swiss hot ends. We've covered how to install their all metal drop in replacement for the Creality Ender 3, as well as a couple of their direct drive all metal hot end combos that are compatible with a wide range of printers and a wide range of the Creality line of machines. Now, over the years, Creality has released a few different versions of their hot end, and they have done so again with the release of their Creality CR6 SE and CR6 SE Max. So, I was super excited to hear that Micro Swiss just recently released a all metal hot end for that printer. And so in today's video, I'm gonna take you guys through the install process of the all metal hot end for Micro Swiss on the Creality CR6 SE. Micro Swiss does have a PDF guide install for this all metal hot end on the CR6 SE. So like always, with the video, my goal is to give you kind of another point of reference, some different angles as far as um, having a video versus a still photo and hopefully filling in any gaps or questions you might have while going through that guide. My recommendation would be to take a look first at the PDF guide, which I will have linked in the description of this video. So that way you can kind of gain a bit of familiarity with the conversion process. I did want to say that although it is pretty normal for my tutorial videos, we are going to be moving very quickly, so you will want to pause and jump around as needed. I'm really excited to get this installed in the CR6 SE because there are a couple of filaments I want to play around with on this particular machine that I just can't do right now because of the non-all metal or PTFE lined hot end. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. All right, before we jump into the install, let's go through all the things that should be included with your CR6 SE all metal hot end. Inside the box, you'll find a card that's got a QR code for Micro Swiss's support, should you need it. There is gonna be a bag that has the heat sink, heat break, Bowden tube nut, as well as the brass fitting for that Bowden tube. You'll find your new aluminum heater block, the silicone sock for that new hot end, a bag of tools that has a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench, a seven millimeter spanner wrench, two grub screws, one is extra and an extra brass fitting. And last but not least, a 0.4 millimeter plated brass nozzle. This is everything that should be included. If you are missing anything, make sure to reach out to Microsys before disassembling your hot end and trying to install this. Aside from that, you are going to need a few tools. A couple things are supplied and the adjustable wrench is really the only thing I had to have myself. The six millimeter socket wrench and two millimeter Allen wrench were actually both included with my CR6 SE, but make sure you've got all these things available. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we are ready to start disassembling the CR6 SE so that way we can install the new all metal hot end. First step will be to grab the two millimeter Allen wrench and remove the two screws that are covering the fan shroud so that way we can get access to the hot end. I did wanna note right away that all these screws coming off of the printer while we are removing the old hot end need to be held on to because we will be reusing all of them for the new install. So just make sure you put them somewhere where they're gonna be safe. Once the fan shroud is removed, go ahead and remove the silicone sock. And then if you've got filament that's already loaded in from when you were printing before, or maybe some that's stuck in the hot end, Micro Swiss recommends to turn on the printer and heat it up to 235 Celsius, which is what I did here. And then all I do is I go ahead and loosen the tension on the extruder, which will allow me to then push the filament in ever so slightly to remove any hardened or cooled filament that might be in the hot end. And then I go ahead and pull the filament strand out to make sure it's completely out of the printer and then just grab whatever filament obviously has oozed out of the hot end. Now that we've done that, we are ready to remove the existing nozzle and we are going to be using an adjustable wrench and a six millimeter socket wrench to do so. For this, just go ahead and slide the adjustable wrench onto the heater block and then use the six millimeter wrench to turn the nozzle. It did take a lot more oomph than I thought that it would. So just make sure you've got a good grip on the adjustable wrench and you are supporting the hot end. Once you've got the nozzle removed, we can go ahead and turn the hot end off and then go ahead and turn off the printer. And I went ahead and removed the power cable and let it cool down for about 15 minutes just to make sure it is not going to be hot. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the blue collet clip. It's super easy to do. If you just push it to the side, it kind of pops right out. And then I actually dropped the whole X carriage down so that way the fan shroud was sitting on the bed instead of dangling from that uh, fan cable. 
Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the Bowden tube. If you just push down on the push fitting, it will come right out and you can kind of put that off behind your X carriage and we can turn our attention to this Bowden fitting. To remove it, we're just gonna grab the adjustable wrench. There's a little section on top where you can kind of um, tighten the wrench onto. And then once you turn it ever so slightly, it becomes really easy to remove. And I just use my hands to go ahead and counter screw that and put this off to the side. Next, grab the two millimeter Allen wrench and remove the two long screws that are holding the uh, heat sink fan in place. Once again, we will be reusing both of those screws as well as the spacer for the fan. So make sure you keep that spacer as well. Using that same two millimeter Allen wrench, we will then go ahead and remove the final two screws that are holding the hot end to this carriage, which are located on the very top of the hot end. Doing so, we will then be able to turn the entire hot end and get access to the bottom where the screws are holding the heater cartridge and thermistor in place. Be very careful with that thermistor. Uh, it is incredibly delicate. So holding it in this angle, if you take the included one and a half millimeter Allen wrench and just unscrew the grub screw holding the heater cartridge in place, it'll slide right out and you can put it off to the side. Using the exact same one and a half millimeter Allen wrench, we will then loosen the thermistor. However, mine was really, really stuck in place. Not the screw, but the thermistor itself. And so we don't want to push or pull on the side where the thermistor cables are. So I took the two millimeter Allen wrench and put a lot of force on the opposite end, which then allowed me to pop that thermistor out. Yours might not be as difficult, but if you look on mine, there's some thermal residue slash glue that had hardened it in place. And so that's really what was holding this thing uh, inside of that slot. Now that we've got that removed, we're ready to take our new heater block and our new heat break and install those into each other. It's easy to uh, determine the correct side. The side of the heater block with the screw heads should be facing downward and you want to install the heat break on the opposite side of that. So I just go ahead and thread that in with my hands and then I grab the included spanner wrench and tighten that heat break into the heater block before grabbing the heat sink. And then you just wanna make sure the heat sink has the chamfered side up like pictured here. And you'll slide that heat break and heater block into the heat sink in this same exact orientation. Next, grab the grub screw that's included with the kit and the one and a half millimeter Allen wrench. I just go ahead and line those up. I use one hand to apply pressure, making sure the heater block is pressing into the heat sink. And then I go ahead and tighten it up with my hand. We will go ahead and tighten this a bit more in a moment. So just make sure you've done the best you can, but just hand tighten it. You don't need to put your arm into it. Last thing to do is also install the nozzle, which will be the exact same way we just installed that uh, heat break. You'll just go ahead and thread it in with your hand and then use the included spanner wrench to tighten that into place. Now we're going to reinstall the thermistor and the heater cartridge into this new hot end. I do my best to try and center the thermistor in the heater block so that way both of those uh, grub screws on the bottom will actually clamp down onto the thermistor. So I really just did my best to kind of eyeball it. And then I took the one and a half millimeter Allen wrench and tightened that down onto the thermistor before grabbing the heater cartridge and doing the same thing. I did clamp down a bit harder on the heater cartridge because it's just not nearly as delicate and you certainly don't want the uh, heating cartridge to fall out of your hot end. But again, just hand tightening is going to be more than enough for both of these items. All right, so we are going to be grabbing the heat sink screws that we took off of the previous hot end and we're going to install our new hot end into our X carriage using those two screws. Make sure that the uh, heat sink has the chamfered side facing forward as pictured here. And then using the two millimeter Allen wrench, we will install these screws. Uh, you do wanna make sure that this is nice and tight. This is the primary point that the hot end is actually attached to the X carriage. So um, having any sort of uh, slop will not be good. And then we will actually be turning on the printer and heating it up. So make sure that the fan and everything is completely out of the way of the hot end. Once on, preheat the printer to 220 Celsius. We are doing this so that way the hot end has a chance to warm and the hot end can expand, which will happen when the metal heats up and we can go ahead and clamp everything down. To do this, I start with the nozzle and so I grab the adjustable wrench and the included spanner wrench and just go ahead and hand tighten that one once again. Followed by the two bolts on the bottom of the heater block, which actually hold the heater cartridge in place. 
And last but not least, the one grub screw that is holding the heat sink to the heat break. You just wanna make sure that that has not uh, gotten loose at all. Once complete, go ahead and turn off the hot end. I go ahead and flip the switch on the printer and unplug it just to be safe. And again, let it cool down for about 15 minutes just to make sure it's going to be cool to the touch. Once done with that, you will grab the screws from the previous fan and you'll push those through the fan and the spacer. Make sure that the wire of the fan and the spacer is facing the same direction as pictured here. And lift up the wire. And using the two millimeter Allen wrench again, we'll just go ahead and tighten these onto the heatsink. Once complete, we'll grab the new silicone sock and just go ahead and pop that onto our heater block. Before grabbing the Bowden tube nut as well as the brass fitting, you'll slide the nut on first in the direction pictured here, followed by the brass fitting. And then we will go ahead and push the Bowden tube into the top of the hot end. Make sure you apply force because you actually want it to bottom out inside of the hot end and you don't want any kind of gap. Then you can slide the brass fitting and the nut down and it actually screws on really easily by hand. So I just did it as tight as I could by hand before grabbing the adjustable wrench and just giving it a final little turn. You don't need this nut to go all the way down. So if there is a gap, that's completely fine. Just as long as the Bowden tube is not going to be able to be pulled out. Now the final two screws are the short ones that are for the fan shroud. If you just go ahead and grab the fan shroud, line up the fan shroud with the holes on the X carriage back plate, we can go ahead and take the two millimeter Allen wrench and install this uh, to close everything back up. With the fan shroud installed, you are now complete with the all metal hot end conversion. Micro Swiss does recommend changing your slicer's retraction distance to three and a half millimeters and the retraction speed to 35 millimeters a second for this hot end. Also, using an all metal hot end will often require a slight bump in temperature from five to 10 Celsius roughly from what you were previously printing at. The first thing I did after install was to print out the pot of greed that came on the printer in PLA just to make sure that everything was working correctly. After I saw that it was, I loaded up some nylon X to print out a small corner bracket in this carbon fiber nylon, which isn't something I could do before I had this hot end installed. I did want to note that I often get comments after these installs about things like PID tuning and how to raise the firmware temperature to allow for up to 300 Celsius, which should be fine with this hot end. For that, I will be releasing a separate video in a few weeks time that'll show you how to flash your CR6 SE with the popular community firmware to increase the max temp and add some awesome additional features like the ability to PID tune directly from your printer. If you guys have any questions about anything I covered or maybe did not cover in this video, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And as always, if I don't have the answer myself, I have no problem reaching out directly to MicroSwiss to get the answer from them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diano from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.